We begin tonight with a critical event for President Biden. Just hours ago, the president wrapped up a four-hour summit with China's President Xi Jinping in California. It was their first face-to-face -face meeting in over a year. The goal? Dialing back rapidly escalating tensions between the two superpowers. Tonight, at a news conference, President Biden was asked if he trusted Beijing. I trust but verify, as the old saying goes. That's where I am. And, uh, you know, uh, we're in a competitive relationship, China and the United States. But uh, my responsibility is to, uh, to make, it, uh, make this rational and manageable so it, uh, so it doesn't result in conflict. That's what I'm all about. Biden also said they agreed to take steps to combat fentanyl production and restore military communication. So now let's look at the split screen. While the current president of the United States was representing the country on the world stage, the former president, the 2024 GOP frontrunner, was dealing with his multiple legal cases. The judge in the Georgia election interference case plans to issue a protective order to lock down some of the sensitive evidence. This week, of course, videos of witness testimonies were leaked to the public. Those co-defendants went on to plead guilty. But today, a lawyer for a separate co-defendant in the case admitted they were the ones leaking the videos. In being transparent with the court and to make sure that uh, nobody else gets blamed for what happened uh, and so that I can go to sleep well tonight, uh, Judge, I, I did release those videos to one outlet. In Trump's New York, in, in New York, excuse me, Trump's lawyers have asked the judge in his civil fraud case to declare, declare, excuse me, I'm marble mouth tonight, to declare a mistrial. They say the same judge and his law clerk are politically biased against Trump. The judge is expected to reject the request. It might be 1130 at night, but we've got some breaking news. The Senate just passed the House's two-step funding bill to avoid a government shutdown. The bill will now head to President Biden's desk. And speaking of the Senate, as we talked about earlier, Senator Joe Manchin says he is absolutely considering running for president. Here's what he told our colleague Kristen Welker about what he thinks of President Biden. As you sit here today, do you think President Biden and Vice President Harris are the strongest ticket to represent the Democratic Party in 2024? Not in the centrist part. No, I don't. And they know how I feel. This is not a I do not believe that they are basically where Joe Biden has come from and just go back to the campaign. He's been here for long. He understands the system. And I think he's a good man. And we have good conversations. We just disagree. You're going too far left. I Simone and Matthew is still here. Matthew, Joe Manchin is making this argument that we need this fresh new voice. He's just a few years younger than Biden and Trump, and he's been around Washington for years. What's so new about him? Well, he's held political office for decades, so I don't know what actually he thinks he's going to bring new and fresh to this. That's the first thing. The second thing is, and I think you and I have had this conversation, I don't know what he's actually talking about the center of the, the mm -hmm. country, because he may be unfamiliar <laughs> with what the center of the country is. But almost on every major issue, Joe Biden is in the center, his exact center of the country. He's in the center of the country on Roe versus Wade. He's in the center of the country on, on common sense gun reform. He's in the center of the country on raising uh, minimum wage and higher taxes on the wealthy. He's in the center of the country on what to do in international politics. He's the center in the country on protecting our democracy. I actually don't know what center he's talking about. And the interesting thing about Joe Manchin to me is he keeps talking about the center of the country. Well, the center of the country wants something done on climate change. He helped defeat that in significant ways. The center of the country wants something done more seriously on gun reform. He's prevented that from happening. And the center of the country wanted Roe versus Wade enshrined in the law. And because his, his standing up for the rules of the Senate, he's prevented that from happening. So I don't know what center he's actually talking about. Simone, what's your take? I mean, Joe Manchin being pro-coal and pro-gun, that doesn't put him in the center. That put, puts him in the right. 
the center of the country also wanted uh, voting rights legislation passed, which was held up because of the filibuster, which Senator Manchin would not support getting rid of. Look, I think personally, Joe Manchin is a lovely man, okay? He's the person you wanted sitting at your dinner table when you were at a gala. However, <laughs> Joe Manchin is not somebody that young people are going to vote for. Joe Manchin is not someone that maybe some of these disaffected Democrats, if that's a word we're going to use, who are, you know, running around saying, oh, I need another option. I don't think Joe Manchin is going to be their other option. I think that he himself would like to be the answer to this um, third party question that a number of folks are asking out there. I don't know, though, if at the end of the day, if another, you know, if a no labels candidate actually emerges, Senator Manchin will be that person. And, and I also think that he himself, he said in that, in the clip of that interview uh, with uh, Kristen, that he he does not want to contribute to Donald Trump becoming president again. He's very sensitive and aware of the dynamics at play and the danger that Donald Trump would be to this country if given another opportunity to be president. And I think Senator Manchin is very well aware that every third party candidate uh, in recent history has born out to be a spoiler for the Democratic candidate and not themselves a spoiler for the Republican candidate on the ticket. All right, Matthew, here's a question I, am, I need the answer to. Besides Donald Trump's MAGA base, who are down with him taking us on the freeway to fascism, I want to talk about, you know, these recent polls, and he's doing well. These other voters who are open to voting for Trump, who say they're unhappy with the economy, what is Donald Trump offering them that Biden is not? Well, I mean, that's that's the logical question. But I think when when we look at when we come to elections, emotions take over to a large degree and people go on a sort of a gut sense of things. And so I think part of the problem, I think, with the Biden effort thus far, and though I think it's going to shift, is that they're trying to to. To, they're trying to break an emotional connection with a rational argument about the economy. That's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. You have to redefine the race in a way that you have you are on firmer ground in this campaign. As I said in 2004, the number one issue was was the economy, and I was chief strategist for Bush. We didn't talk about the economy at all. We didn't talk about it at all. We talked about national security because we knew that we were on firmer ground in that. And so I think the voters, they're upset. They see a disruptive world. They don't know where to turn. They're, they're, they're dissatisfied with both major party candidates. Both major party candidates among independents have high negative ratings in this. And so I think it's going to come down to is what is the issue the Joe Biden and the Biden campaign wants to make this a fundamental argument about? My argument would be, they make it about democracy and the future of our country and all the freedoms that people have because they're going to be taken away if Donald Trump gets back into office. That's what they ought to make the argument about. And I get it. Life is more expensive today than it was four years ago. Four years ago, your dollar went farther. And four or five years ago, our country wasn't plagued with a pandemic, a pandemic that then put us in a situation where we were facing inflation and then a war in Ukraine that only worsened it.